Ukrainian combat engineers are laying mines, anticipating a tank attack. Drone operators have been preparing for the Russian offensive since nightfall. They are connecting explosives to FPV drones and checking the functionality of reconnaissance drones. Everything is ready. As soon as the sun rises, the Ukrainians launch a reconnaissance drone and spot Russian tanks moving towards Ukrainian defensive positions. The Russians open fire. One of the tanks decides to cut across a field, but a prepared trap is waiting for it. It's surprising that they survive that. The crew, in terror, flees from the tank, knowing what's coming in 30 seconds. The FPV drone is already in the air and approaching the target. The operator directs it straight into the open hatch to hit the ammunition. This formidable machine turns into a heap of scrap metal. The tank cannot be restored. The second tank, seeing this, begins to retreat. But it's too late. The FPV operators have it in their sights. The electronic warfare system installed on the tank creates interference, making it difficult to accurately guide the drone to the target. But it didn't help eventually. This crew was less fortunate. They could not get out of the tank in time. Take a look at this pile of grounded metal. This is a Russian soldier's reaction after hearing that a Ukrainian FPV drone is coming for their group. Check out his weapon. The soldiers are scrambling for cover from the Ukrainian drones. They find some ruins to hide in, but the drone spots them. It turns out that shotguns are the best for taking down FPVs. Yes, Bill. Then, they just wait for the drone to self-destruct. This is how Russian infantry adapts to Ukrainian drone attacks. And what about their vehicles? We've all seen those weird turtle tanks. They come in all shapes and setups, from invincible bunkers with mine rollers to old tanks with jammed turrets covered in scrap metal. This is a Russian captured trophy turtle tank claimed to be effective against FPV drones. It's been captured by the Ukrainian armed forces. Now let's take a look at what it's made from, what's inside and what actually happened to it. As you can see, the driver mechanic is practically blind and cannot see anything. The turret is locked. It's completely without ammunition. The tank doesn't fire. And overall, are we going to talk about firing this thing? This is a Russian T-62 which was manufactured back in the 1960s. Currently, it is without armor and without any ammunition, so it was used for transporting personnel. At the same time, the crew of this turtle tank was captured. There was no infantry in the vehicle. So why is Russia bringing old tanks out of storage and upgrading them to turtles? Russian generals understand that their current APCs don't match the combat conditions in Ukraine. The BMP-2 and BMP-3 have very light armor and can be pierced by a heavy machine gun, let alone the powerful cannon of the Bradley or an FPV drone with an anti-tank charge. The MTLBs and BTRs are even worse. Their armor is practically cardboard. Ukraine also has BMP-2s, but is gradually switching to Western models. The Bradley is a very effective vehicle. Look at this. A tank shot didn't penetrate it. And here are the results of an FPV hit. That's the footage of a Bradley that hit an anti-tank mine. All soldiers survived. The same can't be said for Russian BMPs. Hitting a mine is deadly for them. Just watch this video. As the war continued and Ukrainian FPVs dominated, the Russians started adding grills to their APCs to counter drones. This worked, but only partially. Now there's a chance some infantry will survive and the drone won't reach the main armor. Due to the lack of new well-armored APCs like the Bradley, the Russian command came up with a new strategy. They decided to restore old Soviet tanks, almost 70 years old, which were supposed to be scrapped. These tanks have no attachments, just rusted old machines. However, their engines and tracks are in working condition. 
With some maintenance, these zombie tanks can start and move. Essentially, the tank becomes an armored tractor, which is then welded with metal sheets and equipped with powerful electronic warfare systems to counter FPV drones. You all saw the first use of these under Chassiv Yar, showing the success of this approach. Despite artillery shelling, they managed to break through the Ukrainian defense, drop off soldiers, and return unharmed. As you can see, the dynamic protection of the tank is empty. There is no ammunition, the barrel is rusted and cannot fire, the turret is locked and simply cannot move because of this stuff welded to the tank. It was used as a taxi. Its main protection was the electronic warfare system fixed to it. Now it is gone. Ukrainian engineers are studying it so they can destroy tanks even more effectively. Still, this vehicle is very interesting. This kind of turtle shell protects the personnel from possible fragments. But the main thing is that it has a working electronic warfare system to prevent drones from reaching it. Because if a drone does reach it, this armor doesn't really help much. But if you upgrade a regular tank to this turtle tank, it'll lose its primary firepower. It won't shoot, won't see anything, won't turn its turret. So it can only be used as a taxi. For this turtle taxi shell, they used a lot of different old junk. Take a look. This is a door from an electrical panel. They picked metal from wherever they could find it, welded it, then they put a powerful electronic warfare system around the tank. The observation cameras were not installed, so all the driver mechanic could see through was a small triplex, and that's it. But not all vehicles are made from scrap metal. Look at this tank. This T-72 is moving through open fields, which are usually mined. To protect its tracks, it has a mine roller attached. It's also armored with thick metal sheets and an additional rebar grid. You can also see that besides the mine roller, the tank has an electromagnetic device attached. It creates a magnetic field in front of the tank, causing mines to explode 15 feet away from the tank. Look, this tank has reactive armor elements. Its gun is firing and it's fully equipped. Also, notice how the Russians solved the visibility issue by installing cameras. In the photo, you can see an impact on one part of the cage. The rebars are bent, and there's a burn hole from a projectile. 40 FPVs were involved in the attack, most of which were jammed by the tank's electronic warfare system. Only eight hit the armor, causing minor damage. The Russians repaired the vehicle, and three days later, it was seen in the same section of the front. Let me tell you how the Ukrainian forces managed to capture this tank. It was stopped with a droppable munition. The projectile hit one of the track rollers. This rubber piece was knocked out. Because of it, the tank was immobilized. Later, it was finished off with the FPV from above. Now let's also look inside, because it's worth seeing. This is how this turtle tank looks like. The soldiers possibly lived here because there are sleeping bags, their food, and their water. This is how the turret looks without armor and dynamic protection. A regular T-62 turret. The loader's hatch is closed, by the way. The commander sat here. The only new thing on this tank from the 60s was the radio because there was a new antenna and visible wires to the radio. And of course, the electronic warfare system, which was around the tank and connected with a standard field cable from the ancient TA-57 Soviet-era field telephone. As we can see, electronic warfare has become an essential part of turtle tanks. The combination of additional armor and electronic warfare systems significantly increases the vehicle's survival chances. Boxed antennas on the tank roofs are visible in footage captured by drones. The task of these systems is to jam the frequencies on which FPV drone operators communicate. In practice, the battle between electronic warfare and drones boils down to the fact that multiple drones can operate on different frequencies, making it very difficult for a tank's electronic warfare station to jam them all. The tank's power system is not designed to operate such a powerful electronic warfare system that covers a wide range of frequencies. Therefore, tanks with powerful electronic warfare systems often have generators and batteries. 
Here's a photo of a damaged tank showing its powerful antennas and the generator that was running while the tank was moving. The principle of tank electronic warfare is pretty simple. As the drone approaches, the video signal is almost completely jammed, making it difficult for the operator to accurately guide the drone. The electronic warfare systems on tanks significantly increase their survivability against the most common weapon on the battlefield, the FPV drone, by preventing it from hitting the target accurately as it did at the beginning of the war. Now let's talk to the driver mechanic who drove this tank here. How does this T-62 perform? Is it just an old turtle-like tank? First of all, while moving, this tank rattles a lot so you can't sneak up quietly where needed. Secondly, the engine is very outdated and worn out, that's why it creates a large smoke screen behind it. This is not the equipment that should be used for any operations. But still, the engine starts and idles, the tank can move. All gears work. Not perfectly, but they can be engaged. But not without great effort. Is the driver mechanic able to see from this turtle tank? The driver can only see forward. If you're traveling with the open hatches, there is more visibility. But in combat mode, when everything is shut and the driver uses triplexes, visibility is almost non-existent. Perhaps they were moving in travel mode, or someone was sitting next to the driver and guiding the way. Yes, most likely. Because, as I understand, there was no onboard radio communication with the crew. Yes, someone was sitting beside and guiding all actions. And so, this is the Russian turtle tank, which was designed to withstand drone attacks and was stopped by two kinds of drones, a drone with droppable munitions and an FPV. Take a look at this hole made by the FPV hit. This blind turtle tank is now an exhibit of Russian disgrace. The turtle tank has become an obvious solution in field conditions. Yes, it may look absurd, but if this machine can save a tank from even one FPV, it deserves its place on the battlefield. While Ukrainian forces lack artillery and anti-tank missiles, they compensate with a vast number of FPV. In such cases, turtle tanks have decent chances of fulfilling their role and surviving an attack. However, Ukrainians have already begun developing methods to counter turtles, sometimes using multiple drones to breach the grills in the same place to reach the main armor. The main problem for turtle tanks is the U.S. Congress. On this vote, the Asia 311... Republicans ended their six-month blockade, lifted bans, and finally approved another $61 billion aid package for Ukraine. Ukrainian brigades are already receiving many new missiles, shells, and anti-tank weapons. If a turtle tank can handle a two-pound kamikaze drone, it won't handle the javelin, which can penetrate several levels of protection. Turtle tanks show us the role tanks will take in future wars. Clearly, cheap drones in one form or another will be in the arsenal of many countries. The best way to protect equipment from them is to use factory protection systems, both active like electronic warfare and passive like various grills. If you want more episodes, please like and leave comments. This will be a great incentive to release a new video. See you soon.